I want to move on to Iowa, if I can, because Joe Biden gave what was considered a blistering speech about President Trump. It was a moment that some said was one of the strongest of his campaign to date. He's been out there on the stump doing retail politics. Um, it is a version of Joe Biden that some people think is one of the better versions of him. But... He's also the version of Joe Biden that says things that are controversial inadvertently, to be sure. And to Lou, I want to play you something he said when he was speaking to a group uh, of what we understand was Hispanic and Asian voters in Iowa yesterday. So let's listen to this. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids, P wealthy kids, black kids. Asian kids. No, I really mean it, but think how we think about it. Poor kids are just as talented to Lou as white kids. Um, you know, the distinction there is there are poor whites, and, and you know, it, 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 how do you think that plays there? A gaffe, something more than that, a window to his soul? What do you see? Uh, it's definitely a gaffe, and Joe Biden has a long record of making gaffes, so I don't think this one will stand out on, on that long record, but it does uh, add to the question of whether or not Joe Biden is uh, attuned to the moment, whether or not his moment has passed, and whether or not he knows how to speak to uh, the Democratic base in 2019 and 2020, which is a much more modern, much more woke, if you will, base where uh, words like that and statements like that are sort of seen as a relics of the past and not sensitive enough to the diversity of the country. And he may face some of those questions from specifically younger members of the Democratic base, more of the more diverse members of the base. And even though he's leading in the polls, his lead has been very uh, fragile in part because there's some agitation among those members about whether or not he's ready, not only to take on Trump, which is a whole nother question, but whether or not he's ready to speak to the issues that face the country in a way that uh, relates to the modern times and not necessarily to his history in the Senate uh, in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And again, to make poor synonymous with minority is something that, that's in in difficult territory. Uh, yes, it absolutely is. But there's also, he was also asked specifically about calling the president a white supremacist. And we've seen other candidates come out. Most recently, Elizabeth Warren, in that New York Times interview, she said yes, it, when talking about where they stand on, on who and what the president is and what he stands for. Um, Josh, he was not willing to go that far. In fact, making the point that he's not going to essentially give the sound bite to be used again. And I think we have that now. Let's play that. Why are you so hooked on that? You just want me to say the words so I sound like everybody else. He is encouraging white supremacists. You can determine what that means. You can, I know everybody, it's like everybody wants somebody to call somebody a liar. When you say, I don't call people lies, I say they don't tell the truth, okay? You want to hear me say liars, you can put it on and say, Biden calls someone a liar. That's not who I am. You got the wrong guy. As a response, I mean, you, you could sort of, you can go a couple different ways to this, but as a response, how smart is it of Biden in this case to say, I'm not going to give you that because clearly he doesn't want it to come back and haunt him, whether it be uh, in a campaign ad from the Trump campaign or elsewhere? Well, I mean, you know, he, he said he did say that Trump enables white supremacists mm -hmm. and encourages them. So I don't really see the distinction between saying he encourages them and saying that he is one. Uh, Biden evidently does. Uh, it seems sort of silly to me. Uh, the facts are the facts. A lot of the other candidates have come out and said, you know, he is a white supremacist. I think Elizabeth Warren tweeted it last night or this morning. So, you know, I, I don't know what he gains other than the fact that Biden sees himself as being a notch to the right uh, of the left uh, woke, as Tolu called them, candidates and wants to stay positioned in in, in the center as a moderate. I mean, whether positioning yourself like this on the issue of white supremacy is appropriate or politically uh, helpful? I, I don't know, but it seemed like a strange distinction mm -hmm. for Biden to make. And, and again, uh, that combined with the white versus poor, and Susan, he also mm -hmm. keeps on referring to Theresa May as Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> caught himself in the process of it yesterday. Again, part of what has been what is seen as uh, a successful trip to Iowa for the former vice president, but does this continue to raise certain questions about him? Look, uh, it's all very on brand uh, for Joe Biden. And uh, what you see is what you get. Uh, a gaffery candidacy was never an option. You know, I've <laughs> talked to advisor supporters of Joe Biden who, you know, recognize that's part of what makes this such an uncertain 
moment for the vi former vice president is that uh, they themselves don't know what's going to come out of his m mouth at any given time. But again, you know, uh, right now he's running in the Democratic primary where gaffes like that have a different meaning than uh, they would if he was taking on Donald Trump, who, as we know, uh, you know, also has a lot of challenges uh, speaking and you can't even sort of graph one of his sentences. So that would be a heck of a, a general election matchup in 2020 between two candidates who anything could come out of their mouths at any given time. But, uh, you know, I do think that uh, something like his statement mm -hmm. yesterday about the poor kids really plays differently in the Democratic primary mm -hmm. than in a general election context. A gaff-free campaign was never an option. <laughs> that may be the line of the morning. So, yeah. Susan Blasser. Uh, Susan Tulu, Josh, thank you very much for being with us this morning.